here's another cool part about this game. Um, there are conflict diamonds hidden all over the map in cases. Um, as it says, there's a flashing green light on your GPS. So, bam, over there on the right. You see that flashing light? The closer you are to the conflict diamonds, or as you'll learn later, um, interview tapes with the jackal, the main antagonist, technically the main character of this game. Um, uh, closer you are, the more quickly it flashes. And then if you're staring straight at it, like I am right here, it'll be a solid green dot. And you can use this to track down money. Um, and you need to because upgrades are not cheap. Upgrades and new weapons are not cheap in this game. Um, and it is actually very... Uh, very difficult to progress through the main game without doing some of the side stuff. Um, what's that? Oh. It's very difficult to progress through the main game when you're dealing with basic weapons and equipment. Um, it just becomes difficult and I like the fact that it never tells you, hey, maybe you should go do some side shit so you can afford more stuff. It lets the player come to that conclusion on their own by basically being uh, ramping up the difficulty a decent amount. Uh, as I remember playing through the first mission, I played through this game uh, once completely. No, twice. Anyways, I played through the game twice completely, and I remember playing through the first mission the first time, and it was a motherfucker. Um, and then I remember playing through it a second time. Um, with the knowledge that I should spend more time preparing and getting new weapons and getting the weapons I want and upgrading them the way I'd like. Um, and it made the game a lot easier. Alright, so here we go, here we go. Let's see, do I have access to all these already? Nope, I'll show up later after I finish the tutorial. So, let's go to Mike's bar and meet a bunch of people. And learn a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily need to learn and isn't necessarily super important. However, it's part of the overarching story. So, whoops. No, nope, no, nope, I am supposed to be shit. Damn. Okay, so here's that jump I was telling you about. And it's either go over the jump or go around and through the water. Um, and you're going to have to go around, obviously, on the way back because it's only a one-way jump. So, yay. Oh, well. This entire game is very, uh, like I've been saying, it's very not hand-holdy. It's very open, um, which is nice. Um, however, sometimes, especially in today's games where everything is you know, leading you to the next thing or leading you to the next... Wow, nothing's loaded. Great! Let's, uh, let's try this again. Thanks, game. Thanks for glitches. Ah, you suck. Hope y'all are enjoying my G3, by the way. Alright, did that work? Nope, it didn't work. Okay. Great. Well, let's try buying weapons first. Watch this fix it. Yep, wasn't supposed to go in there yet. As you could tell by all the tables and chairs and people being missing. God damn, that was, uh, that was kind of garbage. Yep, there you go. It's actually super fun, especially if you want to set up IEDs and shit. You totally get IEDs and it's awesome. Um, the only thing that's kind of annoying, but obviously essential for gameplay, is that when you blow up these convoys or attack these convoys, they follow a very set route, which makes it easy for you to predict and uh, intercept see. So you can buy accuracy and reliability upgrades for your weapons. You can buy ammo upgrades, uh, stealth and serrat upgrades. 
You can buy weapons crates, which will allow you to basically fast travel weapons, where you'll put a weapon in a weapons crate, and then you'll be able to pull that weapon out of a weapons crate at a safe house. Um, I like the idea. I never really use it. I pretty much set up for a thing and then, you know, deal with it. But that's just me. All right, so let's buy assault rifle. Let's see. Let's check out. Okay. And now that I've purchased that, now that I've purchased the weapon, I can go back in and purchase upgrades for it. And I think I will at least buy the uh, accuracy upgrade for this assault rifle. Um, yeah. So, there you go. Hope you all get used to a lot of that, too, because I will be unlocking all of the weapons as we go through. So, here you go. Here's my favorite room in the game. Because you walk in here and it's just like walking into a candy store of possibility. So now that I've got my shiny new weapon, I also happen to have these uh, downloaded weapons. Thank you, Xbox Sale. Um, with uh, a bunch of shotguns and crossbows and whatnot. We'll uh, grab this one for now. Let's see, fill up all our ammunition here. Oh, can't grab that one yet. And sweet. Um, in terms of upgrades, you can't, like, add shit to weapons or anything like that. Like, you can't, uh, like, I can't attach a scope to this G3. Uh, you know, can't attach a silencer to a pistol or anything like that. Um, you have to purchase weapons that have those already. Um, and then the weapon is as the weapon is. Hey, look! We got people now. Yay! We got a video game. Now let's go talk to my boy. Yeah, me too, buddy. Yeah, he's my best buddy. I've known him for three seconds. It's awesome. Um, there is a, uh, a reputation system in this game uh, that leads to nothing, as far as I know. And there is a... Um, friendship system in this game which I think also leads to nothing um, basically the more you interact with these people or the more crazy bullshit you pull the higher your reputation gets or the more these people like you um, which doesn't really lead to it doesn't lead to any like new opportunities as far as I've ever seen it doesn't lead to uh, the enemies behaving any different depending on your reputation level so whether you're completely unknown or you know, the pariah of this entire country blowing up everybody everywhere you go. I've never really seen a difference in the way the AI interacts. So, um, interesting idea, but kind of wasted overall. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That it? Okay, cool. Alright. I'm gonna talk to... Hi! Second buddy, you may get side missions from your buddy. Um, really cool, uh, really cool kind of uh, um, revival system, I guess you could call it in this game. Um, if your buddy is ready to uh, help you, this buddy right here, um, if you go down in battle, uh, they will come and pick you up and revive you and assist you. Um, which is a cool a cool setup, and I really like the fact that these guys are still they're still NPCs. They still exist. They're not like you know invulnerable, like hide behind the bullet sponge kind of guy. They can die, and you often have to help them because they will soak up bullets in a fight, which is super annoying. Um, and sometimes you just can't save them, and you can put them out of their misery, which is, uh... I remember the first time it happened, I was, like, super like, what? But it's super cool. And here's kind of main story guy number two. Yeah. So, take the tape. Hey. 
to see the proper name. You can get the pills you need from the church in Bala. <laughs> Everybody just knows I have malaria. Hey, look, there's a picture of me right there. And the guy with the headband. You can't break a man the way you break a dog or a horse. The harder you beat a man, the time. So you're not one of them. Yeah. What you call a stringer. Dee 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 dee. You're taking a chance talking to me. I'm persona non grata around here. The warlords want me out of the country. They don't like the story I'm writing. It's about the war. And about them, of course. So this guy is... They, they never really expand upon it or anything, obviously, when you have a character with no personality such as this guy. And I'm probably wrong because Half-Life and Half-Life 2 did it with a personality-less guy. But uh, um, apparently the guy you're playing as and this guy develop a close friendship. Um, however, you don't really see that. Um, and it's implied at the end, but obviously you, if they don't develop it, you're not going to see it and you're not going to have any impact on it. But uh, basically this guy is trying to expose what's happening um, in this country to the rest of the world. Um, Obviously, the war, as he says, the warlords don't like it, but apparently he writes stories about you and is writing a big story about the Jackal and his involvement in this as well. Um, and he's got those tapes he has with uh, recordings of the uh, interview he did with the Jackal, um, and that's a big collectible uh, that you can get throughout this game. And you can li obviously, you can listen to him, and it's super interesting to hear... You know, basically what this guy has to say about what he's doing and how he justifies it and um, you know this is a really cool story of there not being a good guy at any point here except maybe this guy so I mean your character is not a good guy he's just out killing people basically for blood diamonds and trying to stop his malaria um, the Jackal is definitely not a good guy, although he you can kind of sympathize with what he is doing once he explains it. Um, obviously, the warlords are not good people. The people you're killing are not good people. Basically, everybody's out here to do... Was I supposed to go out? Yeah, let's see. Yep, yep, gotta go see the father. Basically, everybody's out here to... Oh, I love that shotgun get what they can out of this country as it self as it self destructs um, with no regard for the uh, the people that get in the way uh, so it becomes a really interesting story of how does a country like this or how do the people in a country like this doing despicable acts find ways to redeem themselves um, and that's really the story of the jackal and the character that you play as although they don't really point that out until the very end here we go Boop. Yep. hope you guys like that because that's going to happen a lot Those god beams, everybody. Um, day and night cycle in this game, obviously. Um, it's it's really good. Um, it's uh, kind of makes the game difficult sometimes. Obviously, you can change time at will, but um, it's really hard to see at night. <laughs> All right, I gotta go into town here. First things first. Like I said, I've played through this several times, so um, there's a lot of uh, stuff I know about. Uh, there are optional assassination missions in this game. Uh, they don't really tell you who you're assassinating or why you're assassinating them. In fact, the person who's giving you the jobs is anonymous as it is. So. 
it's just another example of uh, the people in this country getting rich at the expense of other people. Whoop! And head hurts. Here we go. Almost through. There's just another. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Another bit of money I'm going to collect here. I like the fact that the money in this game is, you know, conflict diamonds, and obviously it makes sense for the setting. Um, obviously, you can never call any first person shooter completely realistic, but the dedication to trying to depict a. Uh, realistic scenario, I guess, is uh, pretty amicable. I applaud the people who, who made this game, and even though it has its shortcomings, I still really like it. I'm sorry. There aren't regular services in I, like, I like what it tries to do. Oh, Bam. Gave you a tape with something on it. Really? God damn it. <laughs> I go to hit the button and it stops me to give me the tutorial to tell me to hit the button. It's interesting how the malaria flares up randomly and you have to take the pills for it. And obviously the more flares up and the more you take the pills, the more your malaria comes under control, but you can choose to ignore it. Um, and obviously it becomes, you know, detrimental to you. But uh, they still give you the option. It's always, it's always your choice in this game. Um, excluding some uh, uh, story missions that bookend one thing or another. Hey! There goes your hour-long tutorial, ladies and gents. Pills, pills, pills. You're free. Literally free. There's nothing to stop you from going anywhere or doing anything. Apparently, finding him and killing him is still your mission. Um, however, you end up helping each other a lot more than uh, hindering each other throughout the course of this game. I guess. You definitely run into him at many pivotal moments. Huh. Alright, so... That looks really good. Well, we're done with the tutorial, so let's look at our map here. We've got a mission over there. We've got missions at all of those exclamation points, so... Let's do an assassination mission. see something really awesome they uh, get intimidated or they just stand there hey, yep there you go there you go yeah it took you long enough to notice the guy everybody comes up though so you gotta be you gotta be careful because if you hold it up long enough they'll start shooting at you and that sucks because then you have to fight your way out of town can't tell you how many times I was bored and sat on the roof of that shack right there just sniping people in town while they tried to attack me. It was, uh, it was fun. Alright, so I need to drive basically straight. Like I said, no, uh, no waypoint system, just the, uh, just the markers. So, here we go. Better memorize the map. The uh, the game itself actually came with a uh, a super cool fold-out map, which uh, you could obviously use alongside the game if uh, that was your thing. And uh, that was actually a really cool. Uh... Oh, see this? Yeah. So who dies first? You die first. 
dead. Let's get out. So, now we come to the checkpoint system. Remember when we drove by this one earlier and it was totally clear? Well, now there were guys there. So, in order to clear a checkpoint, or a guard post, you have to uh, scout it. Um, scouting it doesn't necessarily mean that it's... This is a new vehicle, this must have come with the DLC. Scouting it does not necessarily mean that it is uh, clear of enemies forever. However, it means you know what's there. So, I guess if you're short on something, you can look on the map and see. And it looks like I am close to... Close to a diamond or something. Let's find it. Wait for it to turn green. Oh, it's over here somewhere. Probably on top of this uh, rock here. Or, oh, just behind it. Sweet. Hey, you guys, you like diamonds? I like the diamonds. Another cool thing about the uh, Far Cry series as a whole, all of the Far Cry games tended to have, well, all of the Far Cry games, I shouldn't say tended to, they all had extremely good uh, map editors. I could put countless hours into editing maps in these uh, games, and I have. Um, Obviously, that doesn't mean everybody can play it, but back in the day, it was a ton of fun to gather a group of friends around Far Cry 1 on the Xbox, build a map, and then shoot at each other with it. It was actually a really fun time, and, uh, like I said, countless hours gleefully wasted. Alright, so now we are pulling up on a radio tower here. Out. You go up to the radio tower here and you pop it open and jack in. And you get a signal on your phone. Listen very carefully. There's an available target opportunity. Proceed to the objective marked on your map. Dominate the target. Standard game and two diamonds will be transferred to your account of completion. And there you go, you have a side mission. Oh, that hurt. Let's uh, let's take a look at the map and see. So we have to go all the way to the south there. Who's ready for a drive? I actually think that's the uh, that's the airport. So let's go kill a guy at the airport. I wish I had a uh, sniper rifle for this, but uh, fuck it. Let's have some fun. Here we go. Thank. You. Yep. So as you will see, we will drive past a bunch of checkpoints here, and I will attempt to avoid them as best I can, but clearly you can only avoid them so much. As they drive after and shoot at me violently, but hey, that's okay. I think they'll stop chasing after a little while. Here's one of the uh, set piece environments I was telling you about. I don't think there will be any enemies in it right now because there's no mission here. Oh, there's enemies. Never mind. Shit. Well, oh, you better get out of here. Um, the game is definitely a lot longer and a lot more action-packed if you clear out every single uh, guard post as you go through it, but uh, I do not want to uh, waste time. Let's go right here. Oh, and I flipped my car. Jesus! up really quick. This, uh, this isn't going how I planned it. 
I don't know if you can tell or not. These take a lot of rounds to, uh, to kill. However, normally they'll be near vehicles and one grenade or one explosive anything tends to be enough to completely destroy a vehicle. So, sometimes it's a lot simpler to just blow up the vehicles. Back there, I say, it's always a lot easier to just destroy the vehicles. So, <clears throat> if you're planning on driving around a lot and you have to contend with vehicles because, like I said, every person in the game will fight you. Uh, often it's very nice to run around with the uh, some type of grenade launcher to just one-shot every vehicle and all the people near it. You can see I'm also passing up diamonds and whatnot. We'll get to that later. Right now, I just want to assassinate this guy. So we could have fast traveled, however, we would have had to drive. Like I said, the fast travel is weird because it's, it seems to take as much time as actually driving there. We would have had to travel to the bus stop just short of Pala, the town that uh, the church and everything is in, the only town. Um, so you'd have to drive all the way there, you'd have to go to the bus stop, you would have to take the bus stop to the uh, location that you wanted to fast travel to. Um, and obviously, you know, loading screen there, and yeah, that's, that's another minute and a half of your time. Um, and then you'd be there, and then from there, uh, there's only four locations you can travel to. Actually, five if you include Pala. You can travel to Pala, you can travel to, um, basically Pala and the four corners of the map. So, the only time it's economical to fast travel is if you're already in the middle of the town or you're already close to there and you need to get to either the far side of the map um, or want to get to the far side of the map in a hurry or uh, you don't mind wasting the time. So, he sees me. Damn it. Jesus. Oh, probably help if I got around the corner before I started knifing into death. Alright, and now I have a sniper rifle and ammunition. And if you look at the sniper rifle, the uh, uh, state of it is actually pretty shoddy. Alright, let's, uh, let's scout this out here. The target is clearly in that hangar. Uh, we don't need this. Nobody seems to have noticed the fact that uh, there was a bunch of bullets being fired up here, which is great. I mean, great for me, not for those guys. Now I can, uh, you know, sneak in there. This uh, airport's clearly seen better days. Ladies and gents. So, uh, how's everybody liking this game so far? Y'all should uh, leave some comments and tell me uh, whether you'd like me to play more uh, angrily, or whether you'd like me to continue to be stealthy. Ooh. Well, isn't that uh, convenient? More diamonds. Happy day for me. I know I saw a guy right around that corner. The fur. Oh, he's tying his shoe there. The first Far Cry game and the third Far Cry game had. Uh... Oh, he was there. Shit! He just randomly appeared. Damn it. The first and third Far Cry game had rocks you could throw to distract people. Um, also notice that was clearly just random white businessman, right? Anyways, the first and third games had rocks you could use to distract people, which greatly led or fed into the uh, stealth system. Um, 
This game still has stealth, it's just a lot more difficult to uh, accomplish. Oop. Once I have silenced weapons. Oh, I just got hit by a car. Oh, shit. All right, well, I guess you'll get to see the uh, uh, buddy coming to help you situation here. Check this out. And now that she's there, A, I'm very grateful, and B, I'll have to make sure she doesn't get killed while we're here. Um... the bad things about a semi-realistic game is you don't know where she is thanks to no HUD and um, uh, when cars hit you you die damn she's tearing them up she's not even aiming that's sick well fuck it while we're here I guess we can clear out the whole the whole town just hoping I don't get hit by another fucking car person? No, that's a chair. Alright, I think we're good. Well, that uh, didn't go exactly as planned, however, it uh, went pretty well. However, now that she has saved me, um, I have to wait a while before she's ready to save me again. Normally it's after a uh, save point or something like that, but I know there's a definite amount of time. And that's uh, just slightly unfortunate. However, she seems to be good. I was always troublesome about uh, this game is you save, or somebody saves you and then they're there. And if you don't kill everybody and you just leave, there is always a very good um, chance, I should say. I'm going to unlock that save point. There's always a very good chance that... Um, they get finished off by the enemy you leave behind, and then they die, and you had no uh, no ability to save them, which is uh, oh, unfortunate. All right, let's see. So they've got a fire going, but it's not spreading. However, let's get an actual fire going. They don't know where I am yet. However, the area around them is on fire. They're gonna run from it. See how far I'm moving. Looks like he's good there. They're just paying attention to the fire. So sneak up and one hit kill. It's actually really good. Um, that's that's a lot of fire. <laughs> There's another guy around back there. Where's he going? I don't think he sees me. There we go. Let's see, there's somebody burn up in this. Obviously, the technology can't handle it, so they can't, you know, spread an entire wildfire across the entire African savanna here in this country. Um, but the uh, amount of space that the wildfire spreads is actually pretty, uh, pretty legit. All right, let's pop this bad boy open and take a nap. Totally occurs to me we absolutely murdered a guy also. So, there's that. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Now please subscribe to my channel. Here we do full playthroughs of some of our favorite and most hated games. We do cool one-offs like Complete Idiots Play and Spoiler Alert. And every now and then you can catch us on the weekends for some awesome multiplayer games with our best friends the Wonder Pets. I hope you guys like all the new episodes we have coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, please subscribe so that you can check out all the new content as it comes out. And we'll see you next time.